Are you looking to play Ellie Shaman, the caster god in Wrath of the Lich King? Then you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to cover the best race, talents, gear, glyphs, professions, and of course macros for PvP in Season 5. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcapped after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top damage, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, let's get into the guide, starting off with the best race on both the Alliance and the Horde. For Alliance, you don't really have any choice. Draenei is the one and only option. But don't be discouraged, it's actually a really strong race. This is due to the fact that the hit cap is in fact 3% for Draenei due to the racial heroic presence, which increases the hit chance for everyone in your party by 1%. Additionally, you have access to Gift of the Nehru, which is a pretty strong hot that can be put on you or your allies, even when locked out since it's on the Holy School. For Horde, it depends mostly on your playstyle. Torrin gives you access to an AoE 2 second stun, which can be used in a ton of different ways. You can use it as a budget interrupt in case you get faked on wind shear, or even stomp into hex to peel yourself for a teammate. Additionally, you gain access to increased HP, which is especially nice as an Ellie Shaman since you're naturally squishy. Orc is good too, being the easier option. It gives you access to the stun reduction racial, which even stacks with the metagem. This is especially strong into stun based comps like RMP. Additionally, you gain access to Blood Fury, which increases your spell power by a substantial amount on a 2 minute CD. This can be comboed with your Elemental Mastery for massive damage. Next up, we have Talents. With 71 talent points to use, it can be a bit overwhelming, so let's break it down. What you see on screen is the best talent setup for PvP in Season 5. We're going to focus on the most noteworthy talents, starting off with Reverberation. This talent on the surface may seem trivial, however, that could not be further from the truth. One whole second off the CD of your shocks translated to percentages is roughly 17% cooldown reduction, which is absolutely insane. Flame Shock, Frost Shock, and Wind Shear are your most used globals throughout an arena, making this talent a must have. Elemental Focus is another talent that may seem trivial on its surface. Reduced mana cost? Who cares? Well, in order to understand its high value, we have to establish a couple things first. Chain Lightning is one of your most powerful abilities, however it is incredibly taxing on your mana. Additionally, Lava Burst has a 100% crit chance when the target is affected by Flame Shock, causing Elemental Focus to proc. And since the most common damage combo by Ellie Shamans is to cast Lava Burst into Chain Lightning, followed by a Frost Shock, this ultimately means that Elemental Focus will always affect Chain Lightning and Frost Shock during your combo, making your mana efficiency insane. And as if that wasn't enough, due to the talent Elemental Oath, your Chain Lightning and Frost Shock abilities will even do 10% increased damage during your combo. However, what really makes Ellie Shamans one shot is Elemental Fury. This talent increases your crit damage by 100%, which synergizes greatly with Totem of Wrath. It increases the crit chance and spell power by you and all party members by a ton. You want to make sure your uptime of this totem is as high as possible since the stat increase is so huge. But what if your flame shocks are getting spam dispelled? Surely this will cause you to deal no damage. Well, Lava Flows solves that problem for us. It gives you a mini lust whenever flame shock is dispelled, essentially functioning as dispel protection. We recommend getting an add-on like Weak Auras to track whenever this is active since it might open up a window for a kill due to the ridiculousness of the haste received. All this talk of damage may cause you to believe that Ellie Shamans only offer raw DPS, however this is not true. The talent Storm, Earth, and Fire causes your Earthbind to also root players for 5 seconds when placed. And since Earthbind CD is so low, you can practically root players off DR all the time. This makes it a great tool for peeling your partners, and makes kiting infinitely easier, especially when comboed with the talent Improved Ghost Wolf, which simply causes your Ghost Wolf to become instant cast. Elemental Shamans are squishy creatures, so things that help us avoid damage are a massive deal. Now, sure, you can kite and avoid damage, but what if you're stunned? Well, Astral Shift has you covered there. It causes you to take 30% reduced damage during stuns. Silences and fears making you pretty tanky in stuns. 
This talent is the perfect counter to RMP. However, unfortunately, due to the bursty nature of Season 5, even with this talent, you'll still be squishy. Now, for the on-use abilities. We have Elemental Mastery, which simply causes your next damage spell to be instant, as well as give you spell haste. You generally want to hard cast a Lava Burst into Elemental Mastery, followed by an instant Chain Lightning. This is the most common burst combo. However, it can also be used as a finisher with Lava Burst in situations where you can't cast. As with all offensive cooldowns, you want to try and get pressure with this early and build momentum off of it to then eventually snowball that lead into a victory. Saving the best for last, we have Thunderstorm. In its simplest form, it's a knockback. However, it's so much more. It can be used as an interrupt in case your wind shear is on cooldown or even split your opponents away from each other. On maps like Blade's Edge and Dalaran's Sewers, it can be used to knock players off Z-axis. But most importantly, it can be used while stunned. This allows you to knock a rogue away from you during cheap shot so that they won't be able to follow it up with a kidney shot, giving yourself a gap to get away. Next up, we're going to cover the best and most optimal glyph setup for PvP. Starting off with your major glyphs, we have Glyph of Stoneclaw Totem, which is easily your most important glyph. It basically makes Stoneclaw Totem worth being on your action bar by giving you a pretty big shield whenever pressed. Glyph of Thunder is another important one that reduces the CD of your Thunderstorm by 10 seconds. This may seem trivial, however, it causes you to have Thunderstorm for every second kidney shot, as well as allowing you to be able to knock players off the Z-axis on Blade's Edge Arena and Dalaran's Sewers more often. For your final major glyph, you'll want Glyph of Lava to simply increase the damage of your Lava Burst and, as a result, add to your overall burst. Now, for your minor glyphs, there is really only one that's important, and that's Glyph of Ghost Wolf. Since Ghost Wolf is instant cast due to the improved Ghost Wolf talent, this glyph will result in quite a bit of healing throughout a game. For your last two minor glyphs, we recommend Glyph of Water Shield and Glyph of Walking. They aren't important at all, so if you're short on cash, don't bother getting them. However, one could argue that Glyph of Water Walking is a good investment seeing as you'll save gold on regions. Now it's time to go over your gear, starting off with your pre-bis followed by your final best in slot. Before that though, let's cover the stat priority for elemental shamans. You'll want to focus on getting the 4% hit cap, and once you've hit it, you'll want to prioritize getting around 15% haste, followed by stacking as much resilience as possible with MP5 and spell pen being the least important stats. The reason why the 130 spell penetration cap doesn't really apply to elemental shamans is because the majority of their damage and utility comes from the nature school, which paladins don't have a resistance aura for. Knowing all of this, it should be no surprise that you'll want to put resilience, haste, or hit gems in yellows, spell power resil split gems in red, spell penetration gems in blues, and finally the mana proc meta gem in the meta slot. Your yellow gem slots are flexible and can be used for whatever stat you need according to the stat priority list. You gotta remember, you need to hit those breakpoints. Now for the gear lists, we're going to start off with the Pre-Bis set, which is obtainable within the first two weeks of the expansion. The gear set consists of items that are BOEs, which you can buy from the auction house, dungeon gear from Normal and Heroics, and honor gear that is easily grindable. Signet of the Kirin Tor can simply be purchased for gold depending on your reputation with the Kirin Tor faction. It is expensive, but due to inflation on launch, you should be able to farm the gold pretty quickly. Remember that you'll want to use both Resto and LEPVP set to gain the benefit of both set bonuses for maximum resilience. For your full BIS set, you'll want to do the same thing for maximum resilience. The majority of your gear in this set comes from PvP since you'll want to stack as much resilience as possible. However, a few key pieces are obtained through raiding due to their extremely high stat budgets. This makes Ellie Shamans much easier to gear than the average class. Feel free to pause now to check out our gear lists, and while you're doing that, remember that your gear only matters if you can deal maximum damage, so learn your best in slot damage rotation today and unlock your true potential with our Elemental Shaman courses, which can only be found at skillcap.com. And now for Professions, which in Wrath gives you bonuses in combat, therefore it's important to know which one to choose and why. Although it may hurt your pile of gold sitting in the bank, we strongly recommend you get your hands on Jewel Crafting and Engineering. Jewel Crafting gives you the highest stat boost compared to the other options in Season 5, which comes in the form of Amplified Gems that you can only have three of. This is huge since normal epic gems aren't available until Season 7, making the stat difference between the normal gems and the Jewel Crafting exclusives that much bigger. Engineering is the most important one of the two though. This is because of the hand-mounted Pyro Rocket Glove Enchant, which acts as an additional 2-3k to 3K damage off the GCD on a relatively short cooldown. This can be incorporated into your Lava Burst Chain Lightning combo for maximum burst. This is especially good in Season 5 due to the fact that it doesn't scale off anything. The damage is static, so it's obviously going to be the strongest in the Arena Season where players' HP pools are the lowest. 
For our final section, we're going to cover macros. Luckily, elemental shamans are not macro intensive. Stop cast macros should be used a lot since they smoothen out your gameplay by allowing you to drop a grounding mid cast or even canceling your cast to land a thunderstorm. Without stop cast, you'd have to manually move your character to cancel the cast, which adds a slight delay to your gameplay and thus less smooth. For your focus hex and wind shear macros, you can incorporate this concept as well by simply adding a slash stop casting line above the traditional focus macro. The same thing applies for wind shear and hex arena 1, 2, 3. These type of macros elevate your gameplay to the next level, but are only really important in 3v3 arena, seeing as in 2s, simply managing your target and focus at the same time is sufficient enough. Although not a macro, it's still worth pointing out that in Wrath, shamans have totem presets that allow them to cast up to four totems at once. This is technically designed to easily drop all the buff totems at once, however, it can be abused in PvP in our favor. We recommend having one preset with Grounding Totem and Stone Claw, since this allows you to drop both totems at once, saving you a global cooldown. It's very common versus double casters that you'd want to drop both of these totems in the case of an emergency. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Let us know your plans for Wrath of the Lich King. Will you be playing Ellie Shaman? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 plus rating when actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.